In our world lead now, a CNN investigation has uncovered evidence of torture, mass detention, and execution in Ethiopia's Tigray region. It's a story we've been covering for months here on The Lead. Tigray is a region in northern Ethiopia. It's been racked by conflict for almost a year. Ethiopian government troops and their allies have been clashing with local fighters. The Ethiopian government says its operation in Tigray is a law enforcement campaign, but the reality on the ground is frankly quite different. And now bodies are turning up again, carried down a river that flows through the Ethiopian town of Humara and into the neighboring country of Sudan. For much of the conflict, the United States, the United Nations, and the international community have failed to hold high-level Ethiopian officials to account for their role in atrocities committed in Tigray. And now CNN's findings point to a renewed campaign of ethnic cleansing, one which bears all the hallmarks of genocide as defined by international law. We must warn you that Nima Albagar's investigation, which we're about to bring you right now, contains graphic and disturbing imagery. This is the Siddit River, a source of life for the people living along its banks. For weeks, the river has been bringing with it dark secrets from the Ethiopian region of Tigray. Mangled corpses are mysteriously appearing here, downstream in Sudan. We just got a call that three bodies were found down at the riverfront, so we're running down to see what we can see. Gary rushes down ahead of us. He's Tigrayan, but has been living here for years. He's a key point of contact for Tigrayans driven to Sudan by the conflict. Fishermen usually spot them first and call Gary. On both sides of the border, Tigrayans keep a grim tally of those believed to have been executed by Ethiopian forces that somehow end up in the river. This is an awful job, but one Tigrayans say is their duty. We reach the first body on this small island. We must warn you, the images you're about to see are very disturbing. From the binds still biting into his skin, it's clear this man suffered a tortured death. This Tigrayan has been helping to recover the dead. He holds up the body, but the image is too gruesome to show you. His eyes, though, betray the horror in front of him. They pulled the body out and the stench was immediate. It, it clearly had been decomposing along the river for a number of days and he was tied back with a plastic wire, clearly restrained, and part of the skull was collapsed in. It's just a horrible, horrible sight. They moved to pick up someone else. Gerri makes notes of the bodies and their markings. He's trying to piece together this mystery for his people. He doesn't trust anyone to do it for them. Among the flotsam, another body. <laughs> Sudanese authorities take photographs as evidence. This is a crime scene, but the potential perpetrators are far from here, in Ethiopia. The second body is put into the same body bag. They have such few resources, but are determined to maintain a certain dignity. <laughs> They're buried near the river in a shallow grave, in hope that one day they will be exhumed and reburied in their homeland. For now, though, there are only two shovels and a pick. Others join in, pushing the earth with their bare hands. Laid to rest on unconsecrated ground, the Christian Tigrayans desperately try to give respect to their dead, marking the grave with a makeshift cross held together with a single face mask. A new dawn rises. Witnesses and local authorities tell us it brings with it 11 new bodies. For months now, we have been investigating atrocities committed by Ethiopian and allied forces in Tigray. It's clear to us this marks a new chapter in the ethnic cleansing of the region. But here in Sudan, there are survivors, the living speaking on behalf of the dead. Escapees, eyewitnesses from the Ethiopian border town of Humara, described to us a renewed campaign of mass incarcerations and executions. 
the numbers that they're telling us are extraordinary. We're talking about possibly over 10,000 people detained just for being Tigrayan, they say. We begin to piece together the puzzle. We are here in Sudan and with Dar Hilal. Upstream in Ethiopia is Homera. Based on descriptions from multiple escaped detainees, Humara and its surroundings have become a mass detention facility. We were able to pinpoint the locations. Andeya Tabarak, a storage facility. The electric goods warehouse, Naked and Mibrat Haile, where electric wire is stored. Bet Hinset, the old prison. And the Guna, the sesame warehouse. The list goes on. Via eyewitness testimony and satellite imagery, we verified the existence of at least seven mass detention facilities in Humara, where torture is rampant, and two outside town, including a military camp and the Hawaja. These are pictures of Tigrayan victims, husbands, fathers, sons. Many show victims restrained using the same small gauge yellow electrical wire identified by eyewitnesses as having been stored in the electric goods warehouse in Humara. CNN spoke to multiple eyewitnesses and international and local forensic experts. Most of the victims were tortured, executed, piled on top of each other, most likely in a facility or a mass grave before ending up in the river. After examining the bodies, experts were able to pinpoint one of the techniques used. Victims had their arms tied back at the elbows in an excruciatingly painful torture position. In the last few weeks, Tigrayans say the bodies of over 60 victims have floated into Sudan from Ethiopia. Evidence of a methodical campaign, one which bears all the hallmarks of genocide as defined by international law. Up in this remote corner of Sudan, this is evidence the world wasn't meant to see. <laughs> Gari takes us to see the first person he laid to rest. The water will eventually reclaim the body, but this was the best Gari could do. Already beginning to fall apart, the body couldn't be moved, an image which still haunts him. <laughs> Gary stays vigilant, looking out towards his homeland. As long as this conflict continues, the threat of more executions, more bodies floating downstream is ever present. The Ethiopian government has responded to our findings via an American PR firm saying they, they are investigating, but that because of, as they put it, serious inconsistencies in our reporting, they said they're going to be working with the relevant authorities to investigate and hold those that they find responsible to account. Jake. Powerful report. CNN's Nima Al-Bagger, thank you so much, as always.